Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com and today I have a spicy French cheese in front of me, uh, mostly from the Rhone, uh, but my amuse-bouche, if you want to cook it then call it that way, not amuse-bouche du Rhone, oh I'm so funny, uh, Domaine Laborie 2011 and it's Syrah from the Pay Doc, but I've got a feeling that the blend here uh, is Syrah Grenache um, and um, it's, uh, it's an, yeah, it should be, an, well, we'll see how we, how we get on with it. Well, it smells like my bouche is going to be pleasantly amused by this. Uh, there's um, quite a floral character coming through. Um, uh, juicy, rounded red fruit. It's ever so slightly baked, but then there's a fresh bit as well. Um, so baked uh, baked berry jam, um, but uh, with a strawberry lift. It, it smells like it's going to be rather attractive. 5.50 a bottle. Can't fault that. Um, it's got spice. It tastes of a place rather than a process. Um, and um, almost a wine that you'd uh, you'd want to chill down slightly. It's got it doesn't feel like it's got any rough edges that would suffer at uh, lower temperatures. Um, uh, yes, yes. Summer evening, but chill it down barbecue. Bring out the sausages type of wine. Um, and uh, I'm gonna have another squeak. Rather nice. Next one. Um, I've got two from Jean-Luc Colombo, um, so this one and this one to finish with, uh, but uh, we're in the Northern Rhone here with um, uh, Jean-Luc Colombo Les Fées Brunes Creux Hermitage Syrah 2009. Um, and interesting that they put Syrah on this label. I mean, you, you are allowed to put some white grapes into a red uh, Crow's Hermitage and Hermitage, but I don't know anyone who does. Uh, and the only red grape permitted is Syrah, but um, uh, it's probably one of those things where if people don't know Crow's Hermitage, they might have heard of Syrah, and they will pluck a bottle up from the shelf. Let's see whether their pluck will have been worthwhile. Yes. Um, roasted, uh, ruddy, uh, raspberry, black currant. Um, there's a, a, a perfumed, almost like a, a sagey, uh, orange peel character as well. Um, it smells like it's going to be. Uh, it's a not a lanky wine. It's a it's a svelte wine. Um, there's a lot. It feels like quite svelte, but quite uh, quite large. Uh, not as large as an Hermitage would be, but. Um, not a skinny git, in other words, uh, but uh, it's a well, uh, it's like medium sized, but toned. Oh, delicious. Um, there's a wildness about it. There's this juicy berry. There's a freshness of fruit. Sometimes um, some Rhone wines can be wild in a, in a type of way. This is wild in a sort of mm, interesting type of way. Uh, so there's the herbs, there's the spice, there's the, um, there's the darker fruit, there's the plums, the black currants. The damsons, uh, and then there's this, this fresher end, almost a little bit of red berry in there, and the orange peel as well. Uh, very tasty, very um, Moorish. That little edge of bacon fat on the finish as well, nice. Um, next three are all in the Southern Rhone, so Grenache will be the dominant grape these, with these, but um, some of them may say on the back what the blends are, but um, most of them will not. Uh, anyway. Uh, first one I've got is Harvey Nichols, uh, Plan de Dieu, Côte du Rhône Village, 2009, which has been made for them by Domaine de Lespiguet. Well, I don't know whether it's after the, the crows, but this one uh, feels a lot more compact. It's usually the other way around. The Syrahs are, can be a bit shy, but uh, here it's, it's the, the Grenache-dominated one that's uh, just uh, feeling uh, looking a little bit, um, not sulky at the moment, but uh, like you say, it doesn't want to come out to play just at the moment. There is, there is some dark fruit there, there's some berries, uh, a bit of herbs, a bit of spice, um, uh, and it feels like there's a, a rounded herby softness, but um, I think that there's more rounded herby softness to emerge within, uh, uh, if, if I give it a little bit more agitation, or if I were to wait an hour or so. But then you come to taste it, and suddenly, voila, here I am. Um, so there's a nice, um, well, it's, 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 uh, there's the herbs, so there's, uh, there's, there's, there's a bit of black pepper, there's a bit of uh, uh, things like basil, sage coming through, uh, and then the, there's this dark fruit core, um, black currants, blackberries, um, may, uh, very, very dark plums, and the skinny edge of plums, when, uh, not, not when they've, the, the skins have dried out, but when you, you, you chew into the, a very ripe, dark-skinned plum. Um, but there's also something like... Uh, I don't know whether it's coal tar or um, something, something like that, that, that that's, uh, that's in there. Uh, feels almost like a wine that if, you were, if, you, if you're going to drink it now, shove it in a jug for an hour or so before you serve it, so it, it will have had a chance to, uh, to blossom. But also feels like a wine that's got a, a rather promising future for anyone who's got space to stick half a dozen bottles away. 
I like that. Let's see how I like uh, the Keran from Vidal Fleury, 2010 vintage. Um, give it a whirl. I don't know whether it's a different vintage, 2009 for the first one, 2010 for this one, uh, but this feels, um, uh, the younger one actually feels softer, rounder, uh, friendlier, uh, maybe less cerebral? Well, I don't know, but this is just from the smell. Because um, the, the, the fruit, yeah, the fruit feels more ample. Uh, it feels, uh, the, 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 it's maybe not going to have the same concentration, but um, uh, certainly at this stage, feels like a more uh, friendly, approachable wine. Let's try it. And it's got the herbs, it's got the spice. Um, and maybe it's more on the red fruit side than, side than the dark fruit side of the uh, Plan de Dieu. Um, uh, there's still uh, this element of um, what I call that cold tar type of tannin um, uh, as a thread that goes through it. And there's a freshness uh, and th there's a warmth but still with the freshness. I mean, sometimes uh, in the Southern Rhone there is a danger of over-ripening everything and losing your freshness, uh, but both of these have got that um, fresher uh, herbal wild edge, uh, but not going over the top. They're both clean, they're both fresh, and uh, both rather tasty. Yum. Um, uh, final one, Jean-Luc Colombo uh, back again uh, with his Chateau Neuf du Pape, uh, Les Batavelles. And, uh, doesn't have any details about the blend on here, but if it's anything but like typical Chateau Neuf, it'll be 70-ish percent uh, Grenache, propped up by Syrah and Morvedre, and maybe with another grape or two making an appearance, uh, but uh, yes, making a quite a long way down the cast list. It's a very soft floral smell here. Um, it feels more um, red fruity, um, and there's a, a floral warmth to it. Uh, there's a bit of citrus in there. Um, it doesn't feel, whereas the, the two before uh, felt um, almost like they were trying to not assert themselves on you, but certainly uh, muscle in to the front of the photograph, for want of a better term. Um, this one feels like it's confident in its rounded richness. Um, it does feel that the, the, there's, as with the Plan de Dieu, it feels like there's a side of this which is still to emerge, but um, it feels like everything is here and it's quietly confident, but not trying to bash you around the head with power. And it's the same when you come to taste it. Uh, there's certainly a warmth. Alcohol here is only 13.5%, which for Chateau Neuf is on the, um, on the light side. Uh, but uh, there is this, this uh, again, this tar-like background, uh, but then there's this red fruit, softness, sweetness, freshness. Sweet and fresh, again, that nice combination. Ripe fruit, but with something to, um, uh, to support it and stop it going wobbly. Uh, it does feel like there are some characters in there that will need a bit of time to come out far more than in the Plan de Dieu. The Plan de Dieu felt like it maybe needed a year or two. This one almost feels like it's, it's one of those that um, you would be pleasantly surprised by it in 10 years' time. For the moment, though, it's... Um, I just say I, there's no hard edges there. Uh, there's no um, uh, well, it'll it's a, you, no one of those things. Not one of those things where you say, oh, it's a food wine. You need to have it with food. Yes, it, 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 it's it's certainly made to be drunk with food. But uh, there's nothing there that's out of balance. It feels quietly confident. Of the sort of wine where I think that I'm not seeing. I'm probably seeing. It feels like I'm all seeing about 60, 65 percent of it at the moment, and it really needs extra time to to come out. It's one of the problems with doing these tastings straight to camera that you get your first impression, um, and uh, then you try the wines later, and some of them have deteriorated, some of them have stayed the same, and some of them extra nuances emerge. Um, so I, that's the one, and the Plan de Dieu maybe uh, that I think will very will benefit from the extra time. Uh, but uh, but the, uh, the Chateau Neuf in particular, uh, I'll be looking forward to how that develops because it's extremely tasty now, but I think there's an even tastier wine to come with time and patience, of course, both of which I have in spades. See you soon.